이게 아, 다 뭐야? 아, 압니다. 황당하신 거. 저기 저라도 황당할 것 같아요. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 stories of people secretly living in other people's homes. To come into a house like this in this neighborhood that's clearly being lived in, that's bold. He was a really nice guy, like, I, I feel bad for him, but it's just, you know, he wasn't supposed to be living there. Anthony Jones was arrested and charged with unlawful entry. No one knows how long he had allegedly been living there. For this list, we're only looking at verified, true stories of people who found themselves living with a secret stranger. Let us know in the comments which one will leave you searching your house for hiding spots. Number 10. Velma Kellen Squatter 73-year-old Velma Kellen spent a few months one Washington winter wondering why the front of her house was so cold. The problem was so bad that Kellen actually replaced her furnace to keep her home toasty over Christmas, but it remained chilly. Stranger still, the building was mysteriously starting to smell of marijuana. When a repairman came to take a look at the furnace, he had a shocking revelation. Underneath the house, one of the heating ducts had been completely cut so that a squatter could redirect the heat down there. Scarily, this squatter was never found. The only things left in the crawl space were empty beer cans and liquor bottles. Number 9. Jimmy's Friend In 2016, Seattle resident Davis Wallman noticed strange things happening in his home. Namely, lights had been switched on and things were out of place. We know what you're thinking. Ghosts. Hello! How are you? But there was no supernatural force at work here. Wallman eventually investigated his attic and found a woman hiding in a locked room up there, who claimed that Jimmy told her she could stay and that she'd been there for a couple of days already. In fact, she went so far as to claim that it was her house. I'm like, who the heck are you? What are, wh why are you in my house? And she keeps kind of going, this is my house. I live here. I've been here for three days. Jimmy said I could live here. Despite Wallman's attempt to keep her there, the squatter got away, fleeing the house before the cops arrived. The fire escape ladder was hanging from the deck, and a screen from the bathroom window was in the tub. It's just weird, you know? Number eight, Stanley Carter. Christmas is a time for giving. It's the most wonderful time of the year. But you're meant to give to other people, not to steal from them and give to yourself. I must stop this Christmas from coming! Right now. This Grinch made the news in Pennsylvania in 2008 when he was found hiding in a family's attic in a house in Wilkes-Barre. During his 10-day stay, 21-year-old Stanley Carter had stolen clothes, cash, an iPod, and a laptop. He'd even written up a list of the gifts he'd given himself, labeled Stanley's Christmas List. Carter was arrested and eventually pled guilty to burglary and trespassing, landing himself 23 months in prison. He also apologized to the family. Number 7. Tigra Shepherd. <laughs> when Catherine Lang returned to her South Carolina home after a vacation, nothing could have prepared her for the surprise that she discovered upon her return. A woman named Tigra Shepherd and her entire family, pets included, had set up shop. <laughs> but this wasn't a case of Shepherd breaking in. She was actually the victim of a Facebook scam, advertising Lang's house as a legitimate rental property. Invited to move in while Lang was away, she even signed a fraudulent lease and wired over $1,150. While it was certainly inconvenient for Lang, Shepard lost money and needed to find a new place to live. Number six, Jeremy. We had been telling everybody the story about the ghost in our house, coming and opening all our cupboards and the oven and the microwave and all this stuff. These Ohio State University students got more than they bargained for when they moved into an off-campus house together. The residents frequently noticed odd occurrences, such as drawers left open, lights left on, and strange noises from behind a locked door in the basement. They eventually contacted the landlord and police, who managed to get the door open, revealing an entire bedroom. Inside the room, they found pictures of the guy with his friends and family. Weirder yet, the mysterious tenant had actually met some of the students in the house, saying his name was Jeremy. It was like, oh, I was wondering when I get to meet the people that live here, and I was like, Oh, hey, like, what is your name? He's like, oh, my name's Jeremy. They just assumed he was a friend visiting another roommate. 
Jeremy was evicted and nobody was hurt. But this story is still pretty creepy. Since Jeremy moved out, the guys have changed the locks on their doors. They just feel lucky it didn't turn out worse. Number five, Anthony Jones. Down and out with nowhere else to go, 60-year-old homeless man Anthony Jones moved into the attic of a woman in Arlington, Virginia in 2017. She initially thought the sounds coming from the attic might be the local wildlife or even her landlord using the space as storage. But after calling the police, Jones and his belongings were found up there. Officers found a man in the attic along with a backpack, clothing and a bed. Police believe he entered the house through a sliding glass door. Though he was arrested peacefully, he didn't offer any explanation to the cops about how long he'd been there. Whether he posed any kind of danger to the house's tenant is unclear. Either way, she's likely sleeping a little easier now. Number four, Andrew Swafford. Another incident involving off-campus student housing, this story occurred in 2019 near the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. When clothes went missing and ominous handprints started appearing on mirrors and walls, the roommates thought that their home might be haunted. A strange noise led one student, Maddie, to believe that the ghost might be in her closet, but it was not a ghost at all. It was a 30-year-old man named Andrew Swafford who was wearing Maddie's clothes. Andrew Swafford is the suspect. He's now facing 14 felony charges. You see him there. The female resident says that her clothes have been disappearing for some time, and, well, she thought it may have been the work of a ghost. She immediately called for help. Swafford was arrested and hit with a bevy of charges. This was actually the second time within a few months that the students had found men inside their home. Number three, Carlo Castellanos Feria. Back in 2005, physical therapy director Michelle Friedenberg Onion was stalked by a valet at the hospital she worked at, a man named Carlo Castellanos Feria. Who is that? Who is that? He claimed in court that he was in love with her, which was why he stole and copied her keys and then followed her home and hid underneath her bed. Castellanos Feria was there, under the bed, for two nights, while a video camera that he'd hidden in the room filmed Friedenberg Onion and her partner. The latter eventually discovered the intruder and he was taken away by the cops, who found latex gloves and condoms in his things. The story was so dramatic, it actually inspired a Lifetime movie. What we have is the very essence of truth. And you have my word, Mrs. Monroe, that you will never find anyone more committed to your daughter than me. Number two, Theodore Edward Conies. He may have been nicknamed the Denver Spider-Man, but he was far from the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man we all know and love. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. In late 1941, homeless man Theodore Edward Conies broke into the house of former acquaintance Philip Peters. Finding a narrow trap door to an attic cubbyhole, Conies made himself at home. It wasn't until five weeks later that Peters caught Conies pilfering food from the fridge. In the ensuing scuffle, Conies killed Peters, then hid in his cubbyhole while police searched the house. He continued to live there for a further nine months, unbeknownst to Peter's wife and housekeeper, who became convinced that the house was haunted. When Peters was finally caught, police compared his cubbyhole to a spider's home, hence the nickname. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Tatsuko Horikawa. Discovering that someone has secretly been living in your home for a few days is unnerving, but what if they did it for an entire year? Your attic hippies, we can probably fumigate with polymethane. Your jump circle, we're gonna have to guess. Damn it. Whoa, how did I get here? That's what happened to one man in the town of Kasuya, Japan. Growing tired of food mysteriously disappearing from his house, he set up a camera to catch the culprit. It turned out that the thief was a 58-year-old homeless woman named Tatsuko Horikawa, who'd been hiding on the top shelf of his closet on and off for about a year. Police said that the woman was clean and polite enough and just hadn't been able to find a place to live. She'd even moved a mattress into the closet. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.